Welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast here toward the Hobby Weekend Woodworker. Your hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything in woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. All right, welcome to episode number 15. All right, today we're going to talk about what area of woodworking we want to explore but are maybe hesitant to. All right, we're also joined tonight by our guest host, Paul Mayette of Paul Mayette's Woodshop. How are you tonight, Paul? I'm doing all right. How are you guys? Well, we're doing pretty good. I mean, it it's feels good, like good we, as can be expected. It feels like we did this podcast just, you know, a day or two ago. <laughs> well, and, as far as they know, it's been a week. In fact, you probably haven't even listened to the, to the last episode yet. <laughs> you want to know why? Because I just released it. Just released it. That's what happens oh. when I'm going 24-7. I, I understand that. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'd like to remind you, if you listen to the show on iTunes, go ahead and give us a five-star rating over there. It helps us reach a greater audience and uh, helps us grow the show. So um, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on in our shops, which is probably not a lot, especially for me. In fact, I haven't been in the shop since... Um, the last time we recorded, but I have ordered um, a few different items to to get me back into the shop. Um, you know, I, I, in fact, I'm getting ready to stabilize some knots with um, epoxy, and I ordered went ahead and ordered from Amazon like a hundred or two hundred like little paper Dixie cups. I don't know why I need that many, but I'm sure I'll use them at some point in the shop. So, Never know. <laughs> hey, look, you know, why not have them? Why not? You know, they, it was five bucks. I could go to the store and buy five bucks and get like 20 of them. So, all right, Drew, what do you got going on in your shop? Um, dust on the floor. <laughs> I don't have a lot going on. Uh, like you said, we just recorded two days ago and uh, not much has changed. I, uh, I actually forgot that we were going to record tonight, and <laughs> I almost uh, ran outside to finish my last video that I've got in progress right now. And, um, yeah, lo and behold, I ain't going to get to finish that tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, so we're recording actually on Wednesday night instead of Thursday night, and it actually feels good to get ahead of the schedule instead of behind the schedule. <laughs> yeah, and That's and our the, norm. And the reason being is... Um, you know, f- most of the country is starting school either this week, this past Monday, or this coming Monday. And for my son, it's going to be this coming Monday, and we have kindergarten orientation tomorrow night. I'm not looking forward to it. In fact, I'm so not looking forward to it that immediately after that, I'm going fishing just to get away from all the little kids. <laughs> Sounds like fun. So Yeah, that's the plan. That's why we are recording early, because I have went ahead and made other plans for Thursday night. And... My wife, I'm sure, made plans for me on Friday. I'm working Saturday. And uh, Sunday just doesn't give me a lot of time to get the podcast out by Monday. So, Yeah, we don't need to hear excuses. <laughs> well, right. you know, if if we all just had lollipops and rainbows every day like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, yeah, Paul, well, may, maybe. That's what it is, all right. <laughs> may, maybe your shop's been a little more active than what ours has been. Well, I wouldn't say that. <clears throat> I actually just um, released a shop update video yesterday explaining that I probably won't be too active, although I haven't been very active at all all summer in terms of videos and whatnot because I've been doing some small renovations in the shop, and now I'm kind of at a standstill because I injured myself at work and um, mm. dealing with waiting for that process to happen to see if I'm going to need surgery or if we're going to try to repair. I uh, think I tore my rotator cuff in my shoulder, so I think they're going to try physical therapy first and see how that works. So long story short, not a lot has been going on in the shop. Well, at least you put out a video. That's more yeah. than I could say hey. about Drew and I. Didn't you put something in? I'm hoping I'm not confusing this, but didn't you do the the pallet challenge? I did not. 
Oh, you didn't. Who no, was the one I, that posted that they just reached like a thousand views because they just randomly entered the palette challenge? Right. Well, I did. Uh, I posted that, but what it was is the pal- uh, palette challenge from last year. It was uh, okay. Yeah, okay. That, that was um, Sterling Davis's um, palette challenge 2014 was my very first video ever. Um, it was due basically New Year's Eve. It had to be in by December 31st, and I submitted it at about 10 p.m. that <laughs> night. <laughs> it was... Um, it, I was on the fence if I was even going to attempt it because I had never done a video before. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a novice in uh, woodworking as well. The, the the project I made was basic at best, but um, I was very hesitant to even enter. And when I finally decided to enter, it was like right up against the deadline. So I got it in and just in time but it actually i got a few likes on it and you know some subscribers and that kind of got me it, it you know bit me i was ready to, i'm like i like this this was fun mm-hmm. and so i i've made a few more videos since then and some of them uh as you guys know some do well and some don't do well and the ones i thought were a cool project and would actually go over really well hasn't been quite a hit (laughs) Uh, yeah that That surprises you sometimes you think something is gonna rock it and turns out the oh just the minuscule project that's quick and easy to do is the one that gets the most views right and and so it was yeah i got a notification from uh, youtube the other day that my very first video actually just reached a thousand views so i was pretty i won't say i was excited about that but it was pretty cool that that happened you know, I, I I immediately checked my other videos, and I think my next highest view count was something like 580 or something like that. So I got a while before my next one peaks. That's an awesome milestone, though. Well, you don't know. It might be you might get 500 views tomorrow. Yeah, you never know. So, but yeah, because we're we're that influential around here. You don't know that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna say we are. Well, you said your mother likes to listen, so. Yeah. Mom, go watch his video 500 times. <laughs> share it with your friends. <laughs> share it now. It. Thumbs up and share. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, I like your, your time management because you fit right in here at Woodshop 101. Yeah. I do. We're, we're Wait, very relaxed. Uh, that's only because I'm out of work because actually at this time, usually I'm driving to work. I have about a uh, one-hour commute. Um to work every night so i have to leave around 10 to be there for 11 and in in my time zone right now we're looking at 10 30 so i would be long gone by now that's that's about my commute time true how long do you take to get to work uh depends on if the interstate's clear if it's clear it's about 10 to 15 minutes if it's not it's about 30 because i stay off the interstate if it's not right (laughs) Now, Drew, do, do I uh, understand that you, you work in a hospital or something as well? I am a supervisor for a radiology department and an orthopedic clinic. See, what I, I work for a, a, a hospital up in Massachusetts. I actually work on the opposite end of things. I work in the warehouse. We supply all the hospitals, and, you know, that's kind of how I hurt myself. I was moving a case of uh, IV solution. Which, it, in and of itself, is probably only 25, 30 pounds, but apparently I did it wrong enough to hurt myself. <laughs> it only takes that once. Right. Hey, speaking of uh, orthopedic there, Drew, I just mm-hmm. found out my six-year-old nephew broke both uh, bones in his arm. Ah. Ouch. Nice. Yeah. yeah, he's going to see an orthopedic surgeon tomorrow. Going to have a plate put in. Yeah, they from the X-rays they were talking about that it looks like it might just be um, two little fractures. Oh, so, and they may just reduce it then. Yeah. If that's the case, probably so, just reduce it and put him in a splint. Yeah, so well, they're hoping that's what it is. Seems how he starts school on Monday too. Fun. That's the joy of kids. Yeah. I, I'm not waiting anxiously for my daughter to do something. Yeah, we'll wait till you have to. <laughs> 
You never know. That could be around the corner, too. Because if <laughs> yeah. one does something, the other's going right behind it. I actually never never hurt myself at all as a kid. Um, well, occasional sprained ankle, but all, any I've broken both my ankles and now I've torn rotated cuff from both shoulders. And all this happened as an adult. <laughs> I, mm. never, I never got injured <laughs> yeah. as a kid. But, I mean, that's that's what happens. I've got a lot of injuries as an adult, too, and that's just because our bodies get older. Oh, yes. I'm, well, I'm not either that or we do flexible. stupid stuff. No, I don't do stupid stuff. Maybe you do. I, I used to. <laughs> I think I'm just wearing down. My body's giving up, saying, you yeah, know, you're 52 years old. It's time to uh, take it easy. I used to do uh, bicycle tricks, and uh, let's see, I was 20, 21, I think, something like that, and uh, dislocated my ankle and had to have it rebuilt. Broke the side of my foot when I was 15, I think. I think that's all the surgeries and and broken bones that I've had, but (laughs) I I wasn't doing smart stuff to make it happen. No. No. That's usually not the case. <laughs> the first time I, I tore up my arm pretty bad, I was in, I think, fifth or sixth grade. And my brother or my friend, I don't remember who, I was standing on one side of the seesaw, and he jumped on the other. I went <laughs> flying. And it was hey, that sounds coolest, like fun. It was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> That's how I landed on a rock with my arm. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Mind you, I've never done that again. <laughs> so, all right. Well, you want to get into uh, into the topic? Yeah, I'm today? gonna say. Well, let's let's get let's get down to the topic here. Um, basically, we had a suggestion from Aaron Sparrow. Uh, this has been a couple of weeks, actually, probably about three weeks ago, that he's made this suggestion. And um, his topic suggestion was: What area of woodworking do you want to explore? but are hesitant to. Basically, either are you afraid to, <laughs> is, is how I look at that. Um, I guess I'll kick it off. Um, the area I am nervous about is doing, like, sculptured uh, like sculptured pieces, like the rocking chair that uh, Wood Whisperer just made. Um, I haven't really got into a lot of the making the curvatures and... and um, things of that nature to make it look like art. I have done, you know, like bent laminations and, and curves and woodworking, but nothing like that. Um, that's a lot of hand tools, a lot of, uh, uh, like that sculpting wheel for, the, for his grinder. Things. Oh, I, it's just, yeah, that Arbor Tech disc. I don't have that. <laughs> so I hadn't even tried to experiment using it, but I mean, it looks like fun, uh, but making a chair in itself, uh, is difficult so I, that's just one thing I've got to figure out how to master is making an actual chair not something with a straight back and straight legs and <laughs> something like that so uh, that's probably my my area that I'm hesitant to actually get into just because I know how time consuming it is and with my channel that's another thing I'm going to have to make that in multiple episodes <laughs> is it sculpting or are, are you including like carving into that Mm. Like, like hand carving or, or machine carving. Obviously not a CNC because we know you have that. Yeah, well, I haven't I haven't started using it yet. I got to start using that. But uh, the I don't know the hand carving, not so much. That wasn't where I was going for. It was mainly just the larger sculpted pieces, like a yeah. sculpted rocker, something like that. Yeah, where they all all the all the parts just kind of run together, and it looks like it's just like one solid piece. Hmm. I could glue all the parts together. <laughs> I could screw them together. <laughs> I might make them look all one on one giant piece. Pocket screw them <laughs> together. Be, yeah, there you go. Pocket screws. Just hide all the pockets. It, it would be square. <laughs> I mean, like, it probably wouldn't rock. Might jiggle. All right, Paul, what about you? What what area of woodworking do you want to get into? Well, the one thing I've always been interested in was uh, unplugged woodworking. Um, to say I'm hesitant, that would probably be because I already have 
you know, an investment in tools, machines, you know, that I'm hesitant to just put that aside and get into being unplugged. But it's something I definitely am interested in and want to explore. In fact, um, a couple weeks ago, I just bought myself a couple old hand planes from a flea market. I got a, a, a number four and a number five. And uh, I'm going to restore them. I have to, you know, watch the... Nick Ferry restore his, and I said, uh, that was kind of the catalyst. I said, I want to do that. I want to get myself a couple planes, clean them up, get them nice and sharp, and, and you know, dive into it. Start using hand planes and whatnot and get into the uh, unplugged aspect of woodworking a little bit more. I also have a, a bit and brace, you know, a bunch that my dad had, and... Uh, a lot of old files and rasps and so on. So I I won't say I'm hesitant. I um, just haven't done it yet, and I'm I'm actually eager to get into it. Um, it's something I've I've been interested in for a while. Yeah, it's kind of funny you mentioned the whole Nick Ferry thing because that's what we talked about on our last episode. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Um, in fact, we talked a little bit about hand planes and Paul Sellers and. And Nick Ferry on, on the last episode. In fact, I, I brought up this exact same thing because that is probably one of the two things that I want to get into and, and maybe hesitant to. And it one area is probably going to be like CNC work. And I, and I talked to Drew about this, but it's I, I'm more hesitant to get into CNC work more for the cost issue. I potentially have an ongoing job uh, making several, and I say several, probably 10 to 20 woodworking um, like plaques a, a year for my military unit. Um, even when I, I get out, like I, I'm trying to pose that to where, you know, when they make, get these made every year, they're just coming to my business to do it. And it's, I'm, I'm hesitant to buy the machine because it's not a guarantee yet. Like it, if I buy that machine, is that return investment going to be as quick if I don't get that job? And it's, it's where you got to start really weighing your odds and ends um, and, and your risk versus gain. And, so I'm kind of I'm kind of going through that step and that process right now of, of will will that gain outweigh that risk in the long run? In I definitely see ten years down the road, five years down the road, like that CNC is going to eventually pay for itself. But is it going to pay for itself fast enough that I can just justify buying it now? You're just um, worried about telling the wife. <laughs> yeah, that too. But. So, it, it's one of those things. I, I don't know. And then I'm, I think more my passion where I, I really want to in, lie into woodworking is, is that exactly what Paul said. I want to get into the hand planes and unplugged world. Um, in fact, I'm taking steps to actually get there, though. Um, the pizza pills that I'm working on, I am going to flatten by hand. In fact, I just ordered um, a new burnisher. Um, some new card scrapers and a new um, cabinet scraper blade from Hawk Tools um, to get my Stanley number 80 um, up and running. And then pretty much to get that done, I just need to go get a like a granite slab or a granite plate to flatten it. But, you know, what's taking me so long to get into it is is really not, I guess, the fear of not knowing. Like, I don't. I don't really know how to set up that hand plane, how to get those perfect shavings. Um, and, and is, is the sole truly flat? Is it square to the sides? You know, right. I, so I would say that that fear of the unknown is, is what's making me hesitant to get into it. Will well, I get into it? Yes. Yeah. But that's kind of uh, where I'm coming from in the sense that, you know, the, there's so many planes out there. I don't even know what they're all supposed to be used for. I do. I've learned by watching that the number four is probably the most common to use for most 
things in the shop. Um, you know, the most versatile, I should, I should say. Um, but there's so many, so many different planes out there that, um, to tr- search all these things on YouTube to try to find out more information. And that's, that's where I'm at now. And like you mentioned, Paul Sellers, also Matt Cremona, um, these guys, I watch them religiously and the, the, the style of woodworking that they do just blows me away. Um, <laughs> you know, I know Matt uses, uh, uh, you know, his big planer and jointer and to, to mill some of his, his work, but he also does so much of the unplugged stuff with the, the chisels and the, um, you know, dovetails and the hand planes. And it's, it's just, I get so engrossed in watching, in watching his work as well as Paul Sellers. And, you know, that's, that's what I really, really want to do. You know, I've, I've been doing, small craft style woodworking I, I don't build furniture other than maybe an occasional end table or something so the smaller things i think have been easy enough to change my frame of mind and see where i want to go with you know hand planing getting them edges nice and flat for, for you know glue ups and so on and so forth i, I just that's it's intriguing to me it's really really want real really where I want to go as far as the CNC you mentioned the CNC uh, it's such a, a, a craze going on right now <laughs> uh, so many people that I watch on YouTube um, either got them as a, a marketing thing from inventables and uh, or bought their own and that is, that doesn't appeal to me I, I'm not that type of guy who says that's not woodworking that's no, I believe it is woodworking, but it just doesn't appeal to me. It's not the direction I want to go. Yeah, it's a different style of woodworking. And, right. And that's, you know, I'll, I'm not going to get into that argument with anybody. I mean, if you don't want to consider it woodworking, that's on you. Um, my opinion, aside from the fact, is different. But, yeah, and I'm kind of like you. Like, I've not really, like, getting into it for everyday projects maybe doesn't really appeal to me. But for the pure fact that it, I just don't have the time every year to make all these plaques without doing it somewhat automated. You know, I did 12 of them this year, and, you know, just to do one plaque took me probably a total of about two hours a piece, um, plus finishing time so you're looking at probably three and a half hours total per plaque and you know i can get a few of them done a day um but also outsourced to get the aluminum plates and stuff so my cost outside of just the wood to make them increased because i had to pay ten dollars per plate to put on these plaques um you know if you're going to do it long term, you really got to look at your cost um, coming in versus your cost going out. And if I can eliminate that extra ten dollars per plaque um, and carve it all out by CNC, then I think business standpoint that's a better um, opportunity and action for me. And that's really the only way it appeals to me. Um, is to help me speed up some of those jobs so I can spend more time getting into like the hand tools um, or doing some other projects that I just want to do for myself. So, right. yeah, and this I don't really consider doing the CNC for every every project or everyday projects. It's um, I wanted to try my hand at making use of it, uh, doing things that are unique to the project, like. Um, I had planned on making a set of drawers, and I think I talked to Jeremy about this already, but making a set of drawers and the drawer bottom itself having my Rock and H logo uh, carved into it because wow. where I got the uh, tools to start my my uh, whole business and, and my, my wood shop came from my wife's mother's father who owned the Rock and H brand 
and he gave me those before he passed away. So uh, I figured I would pay tribute to that and, and actually make that logo on the, the drawers for my mother-in-law. Hmm. So just adding unique touches to projects that I wouldn't be able to normally do without that CNC. So that's that's one reason why I was wanting one. Yeah. Well, another thing, like, um, you know, throwing another name out there, Steve Carmichael, I watched his uh, follow-up for his guitar today, and he said that, you know, one, you know one, another one of the benefits of the CNC is you can kind of walk away while it works for you. Um, he, uh, the, the head of the guitar, or the whatever you call it, the, the whole body of the guitar, um, probably took about six hours for the CNC to cut out. Um, so there's that benefit, I guess, as well, where you can set it up to do some work for you, leave it. You still have to keep an eye on it, but you can leave it while you're doing something else related to that same project. So I guess that there is benefits to that as well, where if you're doing unplugged work, you're only doing what you're doing. You know, nothing else is happening other than what's in your hands. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, another thing you can use the CNC for is making intricate uh, patterns or reusable patterns because uh, you can make the patterns on the computer and translate it to your CNC and have them cut out, and then they're, you can have them for good after that. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, so it sounds like myself and Paul are pretty much, like, we're hesitant to get into like hand tools, but we're making the move to do it. Absolutely. Are you going to make any moves to get into sculpting, or <laughs> is that just something you're going to stare at? Mm, right now, I mean, I'm kind of staring at it. I mean, you got to think about it. You don't have to, and, and Mark's playing Nolo goes through a lot of that, and he, and he does several videos. In fact, his little memorial, uh, his little memorial chest that he did, and the uh, I think the contemplation bench. He went into it. He, you don't even have to use your angle grinder with all the different attachments on it. Um, you know, if you have a Dremel, I did, but I don't anymore. Well, you need to buy another one, and <laughs> you can use like your little uh, ball mills and ball files on that to do some sculpting, and and just do small pieces, maybe. Do a drawer pull um, to, to put on a drawer, something like that, um, just to get your hand into it to see if maybe, okay, maybe I want to try something bigger. Maybe I want to do, um, you know, maybe not the rocker, but something similar, maybe something a little smaller. So, yeah, that's not a bad idea. I mean, you, know, you got to dip your hand in somewhere. Um, and, I mean, you could jump in. Hold two feet and start doing the the rocking chair. I would look at that and say, I don't want to do that. I want to build up to it. <laughs> That's why I'm staring at it. <laughs> or a nice ornate mirror. I would like, like I that. would like to sit in it. So, Mark, if you're listening to this, send me the chair. Let me sit in it for a little while. Yeah, we'll, we'll time share it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a baby too. I'll send it back before your baby comes. <laughs> Maybe. So, all right, well. That was a good topic, Aaron. Thanks for, for sending that uh, suggestion. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, we like to hear suggestions from from you guys. And it really, you know, we talked about it before, but it really makes this show go by so quickly for us. You know, we look at it and we're like, oh, well, we've been on for that long already. Um, you know, because it's something you want to hear. It's not just something we pick out of thin air that we think you want to hear. Uh, right. You know, so definitely, definitely if you got more topic suggestions, you know, let Drew and myself know and we'll uh, work them into the show. And, you know, it's great to have guest hosts on like Paul, especially when he comments on just about every, every <laughs> podcast. Not all yep. of them. Paul is our faithful listener. Except, except for one. He listened too late and didn't want to comment. Yeah, I felt that I felt that moment had passed. Um, when you guys kind of joked about it uh, on one of your podcasts, because um, it was the April Wilkerson podcast, and 
And Drew kind of went, ooh, like, oh, Paul's got a problem with the female <laughs> woodwork, <laughs> which was wasn't the case. That was not my intent. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't really the case. I just, um, um, for whatever reason, I had missed that podcast and for about four or five days and finally got to it. And I said, well, to comment now, the moment's passed. You know, it's they're already working on a new podcast. So I just <laughs> let that one go. We, we bring up old dirt. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you do. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it that you haven't listened to the last episode. I no, mean, I haven't. Given that I just released it about an hour ago, you probably haven't, but <laughs> you, you might want to listen to it. We talked to you on that one. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> I'll have to check that one out when it's available. More old uh, dirt. It's available now. Head to the old website dirt. and hopefully it'll upload to iTunes sometime soon. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, it was good having you on, Paul. Uh, I appreciate finally, being asked. Finally, great to uh, get a voice with the with the name. Exactly. Well, I hear you guys' voice all the time, so it's it's a little bit different experience for me. Um, <laughs> also, the, the, you know, I was uh, a little bit surprised because I know that my uh, skill set is. I've only haven't been doing this very long, so uh, my skill set is certainly beneath. Well, the level you're at, both of you, and uh, but we all we all started somewhere. And, well, we yeah, exactly, and, the, and, and I this, said I was I almost declined. I was I was I'm like I don't know if you, I even want to do this. Uh, but I said you know what, like you just said, you got to start somewhere. So yeah, and you know the we came out with this podcast not necessarily for all the experienced people to teach the unexperienced people. Um, because I, in my opinion, I'm still very unexperienced compared to other people. But I'm right there with you. Or just to, you know, connect, connect the woodworkers of the world. I mean, re- whether you're on YouTube putting out videos or not, um, you know, we want to reach out and make contact and and put out more content and share uh, right. people's perspective and where they're at in their journey in woodworking. Um, right. You know, because just because you're starting out, you know. Sometimes that's a little better. You have fresh eyes into um, a, a perspective that somebody else has may have overlooked because they've been in it for twenty years. Um, right. You know, it's always good to get a f- fresh pair of eyes in it, and and you know, it's a it's good to have a breath of fresh air every once in a while from somebody that's just so eager, um, just has started, and just wants to keep learning and learning and learning. Yes. Um, I watch a lot of videos. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, I, we do. And this summer's been kind of a slow one for me, but I'm pretty sure it's going to start picking up here pretty soon during the winter time. Watching more videos. Well, Once, we don't we don't judge on this show. If your if your experience level is what you think it is, we're not gonna we're not gonna judge because everybody learns something new when they're woodworking and if people have a problem with that then that's that's their problem <laughs> I mean, well, that's the way i that's the way i see it too i mean i don't i'm not trying to be anybody but myself <laughs> if you, you know if someone knows more than me i have an ability to learn you know it's a it's an opportunity rather um i mean we let drew be on the show so yeah i mean if, we, if he's on the show just about anybody can be on it well a quick little I'm, story um one, <laughs> one weekend i was actually working on a project for my girlfriend and um i ran into an issue with uh whether or not to use pocket screws in uh, mdf and i contacted drew over the weekend i was very uh i won't say embarrassed but i didn't want to I'm, I'm figuring it's weekend he's downtime with his family and but he took the time to uh you know help me out with the situation i was in he answered my questions and Thanks to him, I got the project done that weekend and have to wait. And, uh, you know, thanks for that, Drew. <laughs> you, you made yourself available to me on a, a Sunday morning, and I got my project done. You're very welcome. I mean, you're not the, the first person that sent me questions like that. I mean, I'm I'm always I'm always uh, wanting to help people. If they, if they ask me a question, I try and answer it as quick as I can. It's just like my comments on my videos. I try and reply to just about every comment I get. And if I don't, I at least give it a thumbs up if I'm pressed for time. But I I care a lot about my uh, my viewers and the people that are wanting to explore their woodworking abilities even further if they don't know exactly how to do it. 
Yep. And I'm I'm still learning too. I'm not perfect. <laughs> well, well, the same the same project. I actually uh, tweeted um, Jimmy DeResta about the same project, and he replied that was when he was making uh, some sort of cross country uh, traveling to. Uh, I don't know if it was the Maker Fair or something, but he was he was driving across the country and he took the time to tweet me back and take care of that as well. So in between the two of you guys, all my questions were answered and the problem was solved and you know, I got like I said, I got my project done in a weekend. So that was that was great of both of you guys. Well you're very welcome. And I'm sure Jimmy is uh letting me thank you too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. It, you got to be humble about about the stuff you know, and you know if somebody's contacting myself or you know I'm sure Drew feels the same way. It's it's very humbling that somebody's actually coming to us for advice um, about something, and you know a good example of that I think my son was two months old, so it was about f- over four and a half years ago. We were in Oshkosh Bagosh getting him some clothes and. And he's still so young and this like couple was shopping for clothes and they were pregnant and they were like asking us par- parental advice like we had been parents for umpteen years like <laughs> we're still kind of learning like my, my son's two months old and but it was very humbling that somebody looked at us like we had enough experience to help him out and you know thankfully we were able to help him out with what little experience we had, but you know, it, it it's very humbling when when we receive questions and and comments and and people getting involved, because um, then I know somebody besides my mom's listening. <laughs> so, and and she may not even be listening anymore. I don't know. She she may say these guys are clowns. <laughs> well, well, my, my mom will be listening to this one at least. <laughs> I don't know if she'll listen to any more, but she'll listen to this one. <laughs> well, keep, we'll, keep we'll, commenting. She'll she'll at least read the comments. Right. There you go. And and we'll have you on again, Paul, so your mom can listen to you again. <laughs> so, in fact, you know, I, me and Drew have talked about it several times about having some kind of live show or something uh, that we've never figured out. <laughs> but we need to do that if we can stick to a schedule. Yeah, that's our problem. Well, we're, we're in three different time zones as but well. <laughs> here, here's here's the thing, Drew, is we've never missed an episode with a guest host. We've always been able to make it. That's true. So, if we schedule something with, like, a live show with several people, then, like, a question and answer session, then we should probably not be able to miss that. You know, I'm just saying, speaking out of out of a pattern here. If it's just <laughs> well, me and you, we somehow just keep pushing it off. <laughs> it's like I don't want to talk to him right now. <laughs> it's kind of like what my wife does. <laughs> In fact, that's exactly what my wife does. So, <coughs> I'm not going to let my wife hear this. Yeah, I'm hiding <laughs> this one from her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been rambling on long enough. So if you'd like to. Have your question answered on air, guaranteed, or you just want to hang out with us after the show because we are so awesome, or you just want to hang out with Paul, that's okay too. Um, Then you can become a patron of our Patreon campaign over at www.patreon.com forward slash woodshop101 and earn yourself uh, quite a bit of perks over there. Um, Anywhere from having a direct line of communication with us um, all the way up to receiving um, a piece of woodworking for myself or drew so it won't be sculpted <laughs> yes it will <laughs> yes it will he's gonna break we'll out his it. pocket knife there you go he's, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna whittle name in it he's gonna whittle it <laughs> taking it back to like third grade there <laughs> so all right well paul do you want to tell us how people can get in contact with you if they want to contact you directly Sure. Um, actually, um, I'm mostly on Facebook, um, Paul Mietz Woodshop. Um, I also just started a website, which if you were to go there, is very basic. I've got like three pictures up and a couple contact. <laughs> um, 
uh, social media, but uh, that's just again Paul Mead's Woodshop dot com, and also Instagram and you know the, all, all the social media. I'm out there in one form or another. Is that where all that spam I keep getting from? It could be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Drew, if you want to give them our contact information, including that new way you can contact us. Yeah. Um, something exciting, Jeremy, actually just uh, helped set up for our um, little podcast here is a an actual phone number that you guys can call to leave us a voicemail. So if you have a question or you just want to hear your voice on on air or whatever, uh, we actually have a phone number that you can call to, to leave us a message, and we can play that on air. Um, that phone number is an area code of 409 234 Three nine five nine. So just give us a call on that number, and we will try and play anything because we haven't really got anything yet. <laughs> which <laughs> try we, and play anything that we get there. Which we figured we'd do that. Um, you can still leave us a message over at Skype if you want to get a hold of us that way. Um, but this is a little bit easier. You can pick up your cell phone, call, leave a message. No computer yeah, needed. Exactly. A lot of people don't want to get on the computer and get onto Skype and, and leave a message that way. Pick up your cell phone because we all know you carry it. You're probably stuck to Facebook just like everybody else. Man, he just throws us in a group there, I mean, doesn't he? I think he did. I mean, <laughs> look, I am too. In fact, my cell phone's sitting right next to me in case somebody texts me or something. But, you know... It's it's an easier way for you to get in contact with us, and that's what we're here for. Is trying to make things easier for you, and and us, right? <laughs> kind of. We're just adding more work, or I'm adding more work to myself to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, uh, along with the phone number for the voicemail, you can reach us over uh, on Facebook and Twitter, which Jeremy is getting the hang of now. So he tells me a little bit, and. Uh, you can either uh, send us an email as well at uh, woodshop101podcast at uh, gmail.com uh, or you can go to our website at www.woodshop101podcast.com slash listen. There you can also stream every episode that we have put out so far uh, right there on your computer. And I believe those things can be played on your smartphone as well as your uh, iPads and tablets and things like that too. Yeah. That's where I usually listen. I'm right on my See? phone. There, it works. It works. Uh, but other than that, that's really uh, a lot of our contacts that you can find. And Facebook is one of the most well-used ones. And uh, if you want to contact us separately, both Jeremy and I have our own pages. Uh, mine is Woodshop, or, or excuse me, Rockin' H Woodshop. And uh, Jeremy's is, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank, Jeremy. Countryside Workshop. Countryside. Yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm, that the country. Right. I'm a country boy. Country boy. Anyway, um, basically, we had a great time with this episode. I, I, even though Paul, like he said, is not that experienced, I've had a great time talking with him, and I've I've still learned some things from you. So, Paul, thank you much for being on the show. It's been a blast. I appreciate it. Yeah, we've, it it's been a good time. You guys are easy to talk to. I'll, I'll tell you that. Very uh, approachable. Well, we're kids. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm down to earth. I talk to well, just about anybody. No, I had a fun. I had a good time. We we like to do something at the end of every episode, and I'm sure you're familiar with it if you watch any of my podcasts. Absolutely. All right. So on the count of three, let's give everybody a good little sign off. One, two, three. Boom. Boom. Oh.